Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you are new here then welcome and thank you for joining. Today I'm going to show you how I edit my Instagram photos which is probably one of the more commonly asked questions that I do receive. If you've been following me for a while you will know that when I first started my channel I made a video very similar to this but quite honestly I just do not like the way that it turned out or how I came across so I'm going to be doing an updated video today. I've also changed the way that I edit my photos and I use a couple of different apps that I want to show you. If you scroll through my Instagram, you will see the progression that I'm talking about. But the way that I edit my photos right now, I'm really happy with. So hopefully there's at least something that you can learn and take from this video and implement it into the way that you edit your pictures. So the photo that I'm going to be demonstrating on today is this selfie that I just recently posted and I'm going to have a screen recording going on as well so you can follow step by step. I actually took this photo on Snapchat. I just find that whenever I take selfies I prefer to take them on Snapchat because I like the way that it doesn't mirror and reverse the image but for all of my other photos like full length full body ones I always just do them on regular camera. So as you can see here I do have a photo editing folder. There aren't too many apps in there because I do like to keep it pretty simple and easy but the first app that I always go into is Airbrush which is very similar and comparable to Facebook. Tune. So I'm just going to go to my library, I have it saved under my favorites, and I'm going to import the photo. So the first thing that I always do is I use the smooth tool and I lightly go over my skin. I am pretty happy and satisfied with the way that my skin does look in this photo, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But I'm just going to even it out a little bit, especially in the areas where it is a little bit darker because of the shadow. So the next tool that I'm going to use is the acne tool, which is used to take out any blemishes that you may have on your skin. Like I said, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that my skin does look in this photo, but I do have a small birthmark on my neck, which you probably haven't noticed because I edited out of all of my photos, but I'm just going to use this tool to remove it. It doesn't really bother me, but I would say six or seven times out of ten when I meet someone new, they're always like, oh, is that like a hickey on your neck? And I'm like, no, it's a birthmark. So I'm considering if I should get it lasered off or not, but for now, I just take it out of my photos. So now I'm going to scoot on over to the whiten tool, and I'm going to zoom in on my eye just to brighten it up a little bit more and make it pop and stand out. So I don't normally do this on all of my photos, but in this picture in particular, I really like the way that the high points of my face look almost dewy and really glossy. So I just want to go in and further accentuate that. So the tip of my nose, my eyelids, and even my lips a little bit. I am going to take this whiten tool and I'm going to lightly go over those features to make them stand out a little bit more and just further accentuate them. So once I am done with that, I'm going to go ahead and save this image to my camera roll. And the next app that I'm going to go into is Photoshop Fix. And this is an app that I didn't use in my last video, but I have come to love it. I'm just going to launch the app and import the latest version of the photo. So this app can be used for so many different things, and I don't really use all of its functions, but the two applications that I really like are the light and color tool. So I'm going to go into the light tool, and the thing that I really like about this is that you can adjust the hardness and the opacity depending on the photo and its like individual needs. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring both the hardness and opacity down to probably about 15. And once I have done that, I'm just going to lightly go over the background just to sort of get rid of that yellowish hue and tint. This will also allow me to stand out a little bit more in the photo as well. Mm -hmm. 
The other thing that I really like is that it has a restore feature. So if you go over any parts that you didn't mean to go over, I can just very easily go over and erase them and clean it up. Just like that. So next I'm going to go on over to the color tool and I actually didn't use this function for the photo that I'm showing you but it works very similarly to the light tool. You just increase or decrease the opacity and hardness depending on the photo and you can go over any areas that you wish to treat. I didn't use it for this photo but like I said these are the two tools that I really enjoy using on this app and have made a big difference in the way that I edit my photos. Also, another really important note that I learned the hard way is that whenever I edit my pictures, I always make sure that my phone brightness is on at 50%. When I first started editing, I would always jack up my brightness to like 100% and I thought that it would just allow me to see the detail of the photo more clearly. But then I realized because of that, I was overcompensating by bringing the brightness down and bringing down saturation. And then when I would post my photo and look at it back at 50%, the image would look so distorted. So now I always edit on 50%. I totally just rambled on there, but trust me, just edit your photos when your screen brightness is on at 50%. I am going to go ahead and save my changes and export it to my camera roll. And the next app that I'm gonna be using is Lightroom, which I also didn't show you in the last video, but I have come to love it so much. Much. There are so many different functions that you can do on here and I do not use it nearly to its capacity But the one thing that I always do on it is I go on over to the color Once I'm there I choose mix in the top right hand corner and I select the orange color I am then gonna go down to luminance and I normally bring it down to around minus 10 and as you can see, it totally just warms up your skin in the photo and you can make your skin look as tanned or as light. Here, I will show you as you would like. And I find it a lot easier to make yourself look tanned than doing it on a Facetune or airbrush. So this is what I use to warm up my photos. And that's all that I really do on Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and save it to my camera roll again. And once I have done that, I'm going to now open up Visco Cam, which is the app that I use to filter my photos. I think that if you want your Instagram feed to look a little bit more cohesive, then I would highly recommend sticking to just a couple of different photos that you use for all of the pictures that you post. For me, in Visco, I know that I really like the M series. I sometimes use M3, but more often than not, I find that I use M5. So I'm going to select that filter because it is the one that I use for this picture, and I'm going to drag it down quite drastically. I normally go anywhere between 2 and 3 for this one. I think I'm just gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then I'm gonna start editing the photo further. So exposure I always bring down, not too much but I just think that it makes the picture look a little bit more moody. So I'm gonna leave it at about 0.8. I'm not going to touch the contrast, but adjust is really important. The Instagram crop is 4x5, so I always immediately crop it to that. And as you can see, it made such a huge cut. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that up a little bit more so you can see some of the background and the light hitting. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So next I'm gonna go into sharpen, and because this photo was taken on an iPhone, I do find that they can be sharpened up a little bit. I don't go too crazy, so I'm probably gonna leave it at about somewhere between 1.5 and two. I'll leave it right there. Next I'm gonna scroll over to Vignette. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correct, but it's the one that makes like the outer corners of the photo a little bit darker. I just like to use this one ever so slightly. I'm going to leave it less than one. I'll probably just leave it at 0 0.8. I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and then I'm gonna use grain. I don't know why, but I've absolutely been loving to put grain on my filters recently. I think it just sort of gives the photo kind of like a vintage touch and feeling. So I'm gonna go ahead there, and I never put it more than three, because I find that when I do, it kind of distorts the way that the picture and your face look. So I always make sure I leave it somewhere between two and three. This one I think I'm gonna leave at around 2.5 so I'm gonna go ahead and save that 
and if I ever do use split tone, I always only ever use highlight tint, and I either use the purple or blue. And for this photo, I'm going to use the purple and drag it so far down to make it ever so slight, and I will leave it right there. So that is more or less how I edit my Instagram photos. Of course, I edit each photo a little bit differently. And the only other step I would do after this is use an app like Planoli that helps you plan out your feed, which I personally think is very beneficial. But I hope that there is something that you learned and took away from this video that you can maybe implement into the way that you edit your pictures. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next one.